Brokathia Howell, Brokathia was shy, Brokathia Howell, Brokathia was shy, Brokathia Howell, Brokathia Howell, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Makakodash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, which you well. I want to say salutations to the whole for the elect out there, you Akim to Zadakim, that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. On the pre Shaman, this week's lesson is going to be entitled Giving Back. Give back, man. Be charitable. Not just beyond beyond financial, of course. You know, be charitable in giving this word. Be charitable in uplifting your your brother. Be charitable in just helping your brother whenever he's in need of anything, whether it be a blessing. You know, it goes beyond just finances. So help a brother out however you can. You know, love that brother as thyself. And in all things, it's when you get blessed, give back. Before I read, I'm about to read. You had a celebrity that came out, right? A few weeks back. He has money. And what did he ask for? Well, he went up to the priest of Howard and asked for a blessing. You were a great millstone, right? Can I just get a blessing? So it just it goes beyond financial, you know? Blessing the brother. Putting up prayers for brothers. These things goes into giving back, man. And the Lord liked that. Genesis 14 and 8. And they went out the king of Sodom. And they went out the king of Sodom and the king of Gomorrah and the king of Adama, Adma, and the king of Zeboim and the king of Bela. The same is Zor. And they joined battle with them in the vale of Siddim with Chedorlaomer and the king of Elam. And with title, king of nations, and Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Ariok, king of Alassar, four kings with five. And the vale of Siddim was full of slime pits, and the king of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there. And they went, and they that remained fled to the mountains. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all the victuals and went their way. So what happened right now was you had war going on and one particular territory tried to conquer another ter ter territory. And right now we're seeing that the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah got took. And normally when you siege a city, you take goods, you also take captives. One of the captives that was took was Lot. Verse 12, and they took Lot, Abraham's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. So Sodom and Gomorrah was full of homosexuals, but it was also a, a lucrative place to be. If you watch the movie Scorpion King, there's a follow-up to The Mummy Returns. There's a scene where The Rock says, he smells the air and he goes, Sodom. So the Edomite scholars, they look things up. Sodom and Gomorrah, just like America, was a lucrative place to be. That's how come when Lot was preaching the destruction, his brother-in-laws didn't want to believe it, and his wife looked back at it. So it was a very lucrative place. It says, And there came one that had escaped and told Abraham, the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plains of Mamre and Amorite, the Amorite, brother of Eskol, pardon me with these pronouncing these names, try my best, and brother of Anir, and these were confederate with Abraham. Abraham when Abraham was a rich and wealthy man. He was like a sheik. Esau, Esau, when he goes into the history, he'll compare Abraham to a sheik. So when Abraham was going through the Fertile Crescent, it wasn't just him, Sarah and stuff. You know, it was it wasn't just him and his wife. He was he was accompanied with thousands of people to attend to his cattle, his herd. You know, right now he has about 300 that's going to get ready to go to war, I believe. I believe it was 300 or so soldiers. 318, right. So that's not just some regular guy, all right. So Abraham, you know, he had he had, he had had wealth. He was rich in gold. So yeah, when you have that, you have people to take care of it. And the thing about that is he had true wealth. He didn't have FRNs. If you was to take Abraham's possessions now... 
and threw him in a time machine and have him fast forward now with everything he had back then when you convert it to dollars, he'll still be a very wealthy individual now because cattle is expensive, land is expensive, gold is expensive. It says, verse 14, And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants. So Abraham had trained servants. He didn't just have regular servants. He also had trained servants. So that's one thing. I just want to paint that image in brothers' minds, brothers that might just be coming into this thing that don't think Abraham and Sarah was just there alone. There was a company with you know, I don't know, thousands of people, you know what I mean? Or a little bit over a thousand people. It wasn't just him going through the Fertile Crescent route. Born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them. He and his servants by night and smote them. See, somebody that's somebody you could follow, Abraham. Because there's a picture. I got I got the poster in my house, but it speaks about a um a boss and a leader. So the leader will be at the head. And a boss will just be telling people what to do. So leaders like Abraham, you know, the you know, like how kings used to go to war, King David. Yeah, this dude, King Leonidas, man, you supposed they supposed to be on the battlefield leading our people. I want to say this, our apostles, they out there teaching. Like on fire still, not no matter what. That's how you lead. You don't tell people, okay, I took did my time, so let me go take a break now. I'm just gonna manage. That's now you're just becoming a boss. So Abraham was a great example of leadership. <clears throat> and he divided himself against them he and the servants by night and smote them and pursued them unto Haba, which is on the left hand of damascus and he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother lot and his goods and the woman also and the people so see woman got snatched up and on the, look that's what you do man when you come to take a city you, you want more than just there's a, there's a reason why the elites or a lot of rich people, they don't buy gold anymore, right? I mean, they do, but what's better than gold, right? People. You can have a gold brick, or you can have a human slave, or what they call them now as employee. Which one is better? You got employees. So if you could hold people captive or hold them at leverage to do your bidding, that's a lot better than gold, silver, all this, because you know you could get more production done. So they was doing the same thing back then. You want captives and slaves as long as, as well as booty. You know, fleshly booty in the form of these bitches with some fat asses back then. And the booty is the ransom, the goods. Okay. But uh, Lot got it back. Um, Abraham got it back and he got back his nephew, Lot. And the king of Sodom... <sighs> Went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Chodomor and the kings that were with him at the valley of Shiva, which he is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was the priest of the Mosai. And Melchizedek, Malak Tzedak, that was Yahushai. The, the one who the world only calls Jesus Christ. This is why Yahweh Shai says in the book of John, the eighth chapter, that Abraham rejoiced when he saw when he saw him, because he saw him as Isaac and he saw him as Melchizedek. He also saw him as an angel. So Yahweh Shai was always hovering throughout Abraham's life, man, in the spirit. It says, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and this is prophetic. It's symbolic. He didn't actually. He actually did give him bread and wine, but it was a symbolic foreshadowing of things to come. Yahweh Shai giving Abraham bread and wine represents that. Um, you know, going all the forecast. Yeah, Melchizedek sacrificing bread and wine to Abraham forecast that Yahweh Shai was gonna give up his flesh and blood, um, for the for his people. Cause who do we come out of? We came out of Abraham. 
and he was the priest of the Most High. And he blessed him and said, Blessed is Abraham of the Most High, um, power, possessor of heaven and earth. So that blessing that trickled on Abraham trickled down on the seed, Jacob. Um, uh, uh, Jacob, man. It was trickled down from Isaac to Jacob and Jacob and his 12 sons. And blessed the Most High power which, which had delivered thine enemies into thine hand and he gave him tithes of all. So he gave him 10% of everything because that's what tithe means, a tenth part. So Abraham gave back. You know, so give him and in doing so he got a blessing so look man you whatever you get you know you give back man and don't because you know what some guy you know he was in the camp for a number of years and one of the things he complained about when he left was tights because he sees it as oh i'm just giving my money to some old some some men and some old guys that just do it those demons plague in his mind. No, this thing is spiritual. You know, you we you, you give your your tithes and offerings in faith because you have you give your your ten percent of everything you you gave, and you could also give the priest offering. You know, that's your undisclosed amount, or you might just say, "I'm up right now, here, brother." Boom. You know. But when you start to get carnal, and just see it on a fleshly perspective, you're robbing the heavenly Father. Because it was the most high who gave you the job or whatever, or the lottery ticket you might have scratched, or the inheritance you might have just inherited because somebody died and gave you a will, whatever, just give an example. And that was all the will of the Lord. And you have to give back to those that gave you this knowledge. Now I mentioned that's robbing the most high. This is Malachi 3 and 8. Will a man rob the most high? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? He's talking about, Lord, I ain't rob you. Malachi tells him this, in tithes and offerings. Right? So you got to give back your tithes and offerings. And this thing is done in sincerity, man. It's not an obligation. If you feel like you're being obligated to do something or, you know, you're not doing it in sincerity, then look, just bounce, nigga. You know, I'm, you know, I just got to kick it like that. Because this thing is about faith and you got to be spiritual. So giving back to your brother and helping your brother out could cover your ass, man. Trust me. 100%. Well, don't trust me. Trust the scriptures. It says, because I'm going to prove it right here. Hold on. I just had the scripture. Ecclesiasticus. Char charity. Sins. Multitude. I'm all off, all fucked up, so like it. Uh, it says charity covers the multitudes of sin. Um, I should have looked this up before. I... But look, um, I wanted the scripture. If I don't find it, it's all the spirit. But the scriptures does say Char charity covers a multitude of sins. Maybe it's not in the apocrypha. Uh, well. Charity. Sins. Oh. I don't see how it's like I'll say in the apocrypha, but it was really in the book of First Peter's. First Peter's four and eight. And above all things, have fervent charity. 
Leave the Greek there's agape. It's just brotherly love. So look. You had the priest Lamaja put together that show. If you're watching this Unborn Again, you can see it. The squash shit be brotherly. And um I mean brothers, tons of brothers do shows like that, you know, be brotherly. But you can't do enough shows like that because it's something that you always gotta recollect to your mind. Love your brother, man. No have no discouraging or animosity in your heart. None of that shit. Don't just love your brother, man, and let the Lord work things out. It's the best way to go about it. And above all things, have fervent charity. Hot charity, man. Hey, whatever you need, man. Fuck it. You know, there's times, look, bro, brother might hit you up. And you're not even in a mood to get up. You know, you you know, just be real. You know, you're in the flesh. You know? Kind of like, damn, you know. Wait, let me get let me pick up this phone. Let me see what this brother needs. You know what I'm saying? And you do it. And you do it in sincerity, help him out. Because you don't want the same thing done for you. It says. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. And we all sin. Right? We all sin. We all go off. None of us is perfect. None of us will be perfect until the Lord comes and get us out these chains of darkness. The primary example of this, the ultimate example of this is Yahweh Shai. Our big brother laid down his, his life for himself. And he didn't sin when he walked the earth as Yahweh Shai. And he was still charitable. Because what's the greatest charity you could do? Lay down your life for your brother, man. And he did it. You know, so we got to do the same, man. We got to be like our big brother, Yahweh Shai, our king, Yahweh Shai. He's, he's the ultimate example of what to be like. So we be charitable with each other, man. Try our best. I know we're in the, fl the flesh, and the flesh things, fl and the flesh is going to think f fleshly things, bro. That's just how this should be, you know. But if we keep it spiritual, which is keep it spiritual, is to keep it scriptural, we'll be all right, you know. And that is being charitable with my brother and giving back. To my brother in any way, shape, or form, whether it be financially, uh, information he might need help on a situation he's with, or just putting up a blessing, you know. Yeah, I was in a jam, man, and I was I wasn't in the jam where I was stuck. It was a financial jam, but really, what I just wanted more than anything was prayers. And I went to the apostle. Um, I went to, at the end of the camp. I went up to the apostle, the Ram Lab. I just said, you know, can you can I please, Bubba Kashaga, get a prayer through the situation because. The, sweat, the situation beyond the financial part was just fucking with my mentality. You know, I was going through a lot. And those prayers definitely help more than anything. So, again, this thing goes beyond just giving back financially, man. You got to do this work. How can I forget? Doing this work. You got this work freely. Right? And this work ultimately is money. Spiritual money. Build up your spiritual bank account. And... You was given it freely, so don't hold it up and pin it up and keep it to yourself. And I'm going to sit in a corner with this knowledge. Now, get the fuck out of here with that, man. You got to give back as much as you can, much as you learn through the apostles and the elders, the brothers, whatever. You know, you got to put together shows and give back what you just received, man, which is this knowledge. Because really, it ain't even our knowledge, man. It's the Lord, you know, but he's using us as that vehicle for his knowledge, for, to push out his his word. Right, his word ultimately. So, you know, we got to big up the most side. We got to give back the credit. That's how come anytime we open up, we say all oh, praises to Yahweh Yah Hashem Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem Rakak Wadash, Kol Hal Kol All praises and glory be to Him, man, to bless us with this precious word. That man, this is a blessing, man, to have it. This thing is extremely rare. Hundred and forty-four thousand men, bro. There's eight point six million people in New York alone. So that's a very, very finite group of men. Like, very, very finite, bro. Very finite. Out of, what, they say 7 billion people on the planet Earth right now? And 144,000 prophets. That right there should let you, just let that sink in, man. Really meditate upon that. That lets you know that a lot of, lot of people... Because you're going to have the elect, but to, to get that 144,000 position, that governing body, we ain't going to be a mega church, man. This thing is going to be more despised. Um, not People not going to believe it. Um, the 144,000 that people are going to doubt the hell out of them. Because only a finite people are going to really look at these scriptures and believe these scriptures and have faith in these scriptures, man. And it's a it's you're walking on a bridge with fire on one and and water on the left. It's gonna be hard, man. 
And it never for one second feel comfortable. Never for one second feel your spot is secured because many are called and few are chosen. So we got to stay humble and just keep giving back this word, man. Don't think, okay, I've been in this thing X amount of years. I could fall back and do less shows and just watch from a distance. No, fuck that, man. Look up, look at our apostles and elders, fervent daily shows. And we got to be like that, man. And give back and do this thing in sincerity, man. All right, so go to Matthew 20 and 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. So that's what we're doing. We're laboring, right? <sighs> and when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. So he agreed. We right did. Verse two is very important that we agreed on a certain amount. We agreed on something. A penny. A penny is money, by the way. That's how Kamal said, "Give back more than just f uh, tangible." Physical money, but the spiritual money, you gotta give it back. That's what that's a lot more better to give back. You know? Because you know these riches are gonna ultimately burn up and fly away. But temporarily, if you got it, you can help a brother out by all means. But this knowledge is the most important thing. It says verse three, and he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is Right, I will give you, and they went their way. Again, he went up. He went out about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, and did likewise. So that's what is, what the Lord is pretty much saying is: Look, I'm going to be adding, adding, and trinkling more and more brothers in and throughout the years leading up to the destruction, since Abu Bivin stepped on the scene. But when I return, the reward is all going to be the same, whether you was in it. X amount of years to just a month. All agree, it's the same penny. If you have the elect, it's the same reward. And f what? Oh, man. Hey, look. You could be a door sweeper in the kingdom of heaven, as King David say, right? As long as you in there, bro. That's it, man. Don't. That's it. Don't try to. I got to be up there, up there. No, fuck that, man. You know, I just want to be a part of the company. You know? You just want to be in there. So I'm saying that in the spirit of, look, don't come in this thing for vainglory or trying to seek some type of crazy position or like, I want to be the apostle. These are the apost Look what happened to those guys every time, man. Look what happened to Patak. Look what happened to Sarge. Look what happened to ITR. Um, What's this nigga name? The spirit is in the belly. Look what happened to all these fucking cats when they try to do that. Never works out good, man. You tell me, what's easier? Going to McDonald's and flipping a burger or owning a fucking company in McDonald's? There's a lot less on your mind when you wake up before work when you just are, you know, flipping a burger, right? So if you get a small portion, you come in a bit late, later, you know, that's really... I, that's like mercy because, you know, um, the mo the minute you come in, this thing is going to come with grief because you start to understand the world around you. So, you know, as they say in the world, ignorance is bliss. So to deal with that understanding for a long period of time and, and seeing the bullshit, it takes a lot on a man's spirit. To where certain members that came into that latter part of the hours, they was just ignorantly in the world. It says, and about the eleventh hour he went out and found an others standing idle, and say unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man has hired us. He say unto them, Go ye also in the vineyard, and whatsoever it is right shall ye receive. So come to work, man. Work. You can't just stand idle. You have to labor in this vineyard, man. You have to labor. Hey, what the priest on the wall said, man. He said, look, you can't just be re-uploading videos. You got to get involved. So you can't just be standing sidelines and just re-uploading shows and 
re-uploading news. No, man, look, you gotta you gotta labor, right? You gotta build yourself up in this thing and labor. The you truly understand something when you could teach it. So you want to be able to teach this thing. Verse 8. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. <clears throat> and when they came, they were hired about the eleventh hour. So, by, by the way, this is not 1 p.m., 2 p.m. The eleventh hour back then would be about 5 p.m. Because time was divided differently back then. Right, it was started with the evening. It's not back then, rather, but in that particular culture, in our culture, the evening starts the day. All right, the day was split into two twelve-hour sections, and those twelve-hour sections was broken up into four different watches. So when it says eleventh hour, it's not talking about eleven p.m. You know, I don't know. I don't know if somebody might think that, or, but I'm just collaborating that. So, I mean, I'm just expounding on that. And the, and when they came and they were hired about the 11th hour, they received every man a penny. So, <laughs> somebody in the world will be... I mean, no, matter of fact, you know what? That's that's what their reaction is. You could understand why somebody would think this way. Verse 10. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more and likewise received every man a penny. I mean, and they likewise received every man a penny. So, you know, it's fair enough to think that, you know, because like if I was on a job and this did happen, these newer people, when that minimum rage got bumped up, they got closer and closer to what I was getting paid. I'm like, what the fuck, man? I've been at this job longer than these motherfuckers, man. Why are they place close to my, you know? So it's, it's, you know, it's a fleshly assessment. But here's the thing, though. Verse two, they you agreed on a certain amount. You agreed on it. We agreed that this would. This is you agreed that when you come in, this thing going to make the sacrifice for your life. To ultimately attain the kingdom. Whether you was laboring it from the jump, or whether you just came in recently, we all got to get the same thing. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house. So. <laughs> that's why I say it. it's like you can see why somebody would think that you know what I'm saying you know it's just human nature I mean I've been doing you know I've been on my job man and you telling this motherfucker just came and you're gonna give him the same pay as me what that agreement man you agree on something you agree on something you make a covenant with somebody that's it saying that these last have wrought but one hour one hour yeah, you know, this dude just came in a year ago. This dude just came in a month ago. This just this dude just came in last week. Wait a minute, Lord, you told me this guy just looked up, believed on the chariots, and he's saved? Yep. That's exactly what the Lord is telling us. And thou has made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and the heat of the day, going out there, Saturdays, years, decades, you know. Get the same reward as a guy that just looks up at a chariot and believe. Hey, man, that's the Lord. He has mercy on whoever he has mercy. That's how he does it. It's his program. I just want to be on the team, man. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. I didst not agree. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Yes. The answer is yes. When you come in this thing... It's blood in, blood out. You got to do this thing until the Lord come back. That's it. The man next to you, all going to get the same thing, the same reward, the same penny. Look at, um, what was it? One of the elders, uh, elder, I don't know how the elder Ari have been in this thing. Well, it's not that it's not that example I want to use, man. Apostle Elder Gabar be using this elder, I believe it's Elder Yaikwab. Seventy years. You know what I'm saying? Seven decades teaching. 
believing. And a man that is going to come in a month before the deliverance is going to get the same, sit in the same kingdom. If he's of the elect, same 104,000. It's that same penny. You know? So that's the agreement. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take, take that thine is. Take that thine is and go thy way. I will give unto this last even as unto thee. So, boom. This is the penny that we're giving, man. We're letting you know when we put these lessons together what the kingdom is, that this place is going down, what the reward we're going to get, and that we're all going to get the same reward, man. No, no one greater is going to get another greater reward, man. Now, there will be order in the kingdom in heaven and amongst the elect and the 104,000 and Yahweh Shai and all that. But if you have the 144, 144,000, man, just put that in the retrospect how very, very small amount of people are going to be a part of that, man. Very, very small. Very small. 12,000 out of each tribe. And each tribe is like billions. So that's going to be only a very, 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 very few, relatively speaking, amount of men that's going to do everything from beginning to end the right way to get the um, kingdom of heaven, man. So this thing, this thing we have is precious. And hold it fast. Let it go. Buckle it in. Lock in. And just continue teaching, man. That's the main thing you want to give back. Give back as much as you can. Spiritually, you know. Physically tangible things. And the most I, in doing so, will bless you. With that, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Rakakodash, the blindness of the apostles, and the elders of Great Millstone, which will well, and salutations to the hopeful elect out there, you Akim to Zadakim, that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. Shalom.